3.4, that's what I'm going to, no, sorry, 3.5, that's what we're going to talk about. Section 3.5, and it has to do with maximums and minimums. And minimum, I'm not going to write that whole word. So I'm going to show you how to do it, uh, what it is. First, I want to talk about what it is. So a maximum or a minimum is just uh, where a curve changes direction. So if I have a graph like this and a curve that goes, ooh, something like that. Okay. Um, this one, let's point out the high points on the graph. So a minimum or a maximum, we call it a local maximum anytime a curve kind of tops out at one point and then goes back down. So if it's coming up here and it tops out right there and then goes back down, that's called a local maximum. Okay. Local minimums are your valleys. Okay. So the low points on the graphs. Anytime your graph changes direction, um, that's a maximum or minimum. So that would be a local min. This would be a local min, minimum, and then we have another local max. Put local, local max, all right? So we have those points. So uh, that's what a local is. Now, we also have things that we call absolute maximums and minimums. That's if it is straight up the smallest point on the graph or the highest, sorry, the lowest point on the graph or the highest uh, then you would call it an absolute maximum. These are all local because like this one, this point right here is not the highest point on the graph. Same thing here. And this one is not the lowest point on the graph. This is not the lowest, okay? Because this keeps going to infinity as does this. Um, but what this lesson is all about is we're going to change the window. So rather than looking at this curve from negative infinity to positive infinity, you're going to limit your window. So I might limit my window, for instance, it might say we're going to limit the window from where x is 0 to where x is like 5. I know that you don't know what these points are. Okay, and so you're limiting your window and they're going to give you what this is. So I'm going to tell you it's between x and 5. Inclusive, that's when you use those little bracket things. Um, that would be this, x is between 0 and 5, but it can equal both. So you use these to say it can equal 0 and it can equal 5. You're going to limit your window, and now, instead of there being a local maximum or a local minimum, you have, in this case, in this window, an absolute maximum, because now this thing right here is the highest point on the graph, because we're only looking at this window. And this point right here is the smallest. So you would say there is an absolute maximum uh, on the interval, from 0 to 5 at this point right here wherever that is and then you do have an absolute minimum at this point right here what I want you to remember about derivatives remember we started doing derivatives in the first place because that gives us uh, the slope of the tangent line the derivative gives the slope of the tangent line and we did a lot of problem solving on your first test about um, setting that derivative equal to zero because we know we learned that where these little scoops these local maximums and minimums occur they occur when the tangent line slope is zero when we have a horizontal tangent line that's when they occur so um, you're looking for places where the derivative is equal to zero that's how you're gonna know you have these goofy little things here alright so let's do Let's look at how a problem is actually worded. Okay, I'm going to take one right from the book. So, let's say I have the curve f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 7. And I'm interested in what's called the closed interval. So that's why I'm using this bracket instead of parentheses from negative 3 to zero. Okay, so we're only interested in the space on the graph between negative three and zero. And we want to find out any maximums and minimums, and we want to know when we have absolute maximums and minimums. Okay, the first thing first is the smallest point on the graph might very well be if you're, um, if you're 
graph continues higher or lower than any point, it might be these endpoints right here. So what you're going to create is called, um, I'm going to say, a list of test points. There's things that you're going to have to try. So the lowest and highest point on the graph, the absolute maximum and minimum, what might very well be the small value on your interval, and it might be the high value on your interval. So those that interval is going to give you two of your first test points. The other test points are going to come from where your derivative might be zero, not your function, but where your derivative might be zero, because that's when your curve changes direction. So you're going to have to find the derivative of the function. So I'm going to go down here in the corner. That's f of x. I want to find the derivative, f prime of x. Okay, so the derivative would be 2x plus 4, and I want to find out where that might be 0. Where is the slope of the tangent line 0? So set the derivative equal to 0. I get negative 4 equals 2x, so we know x is negative 2. Okay, so that's another test point that we're going to need to try. So in blue, that's our third test point, f is negative 2. You also have to look at places where the derivative does not exist. But in this function, the derivative is going to exist. The domain of this that I'm underlining is all real numbers. So the derivative exists everywhere. There might be times where the derivative doesn't always exist on all real numbers, and then you're going to have to use those as test points as well. All right, we have our three test points. That's half the battle. What you're doing with those right now is you're plugging, literally plugging them into the original function to see what the y value would be. That's how we're going to know if we have the highest and lowest point. You can use your synthetic division. Embrace the synthetic. So negative 3, 1, 4, 7. So I get 4 when I plug in negative 3. Don't use synthetic for 0. It's too easy. Plug in 0 for your 2x's and you get positive 7. Uh, negative 2, let's do that one. Negative 2, 1, 4, 7. Bring down the 1. Negative 2, negative 4, and we get 3. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. So the lowest point on the graph in this window, that is the absolute lowest point, so that's the absolute minimum. 3 is the lowest number, so that's the absolute minimum. 7 is the highest number, so that's the absolute maximum. And there you go. So I have found my maximums and minimums on my closed interval.